Hi, Goran. Uh, congratulations on the film. Um, now, for anyone who's not been lucky enough to see uh, Of An Age, what's it about? <laughs> it's a very fair question, but <laughs> uh, I've made a whole other movie since then. This morning, I was pitching another one. So let me rewind <laughs> in my head what Of An Age was about. Um, okay, so it's summer 1999, the end of the school year. And it's the fi- uh, year 12 dance finals uh, in the suburbs of Melbourne. And a uh, 17, nearly 18-year-old boy called Nicola uh, wakes up, practices, and gets uh, ready to do the finals. Um, and he gets a phone call from his dance partner, who happens to have woken up on the other side of Melbourne that day, which is a two-hour drive away. And they have to somehow reunite and get their clothes together and get their act together and perform. Um, and both of them are, are under 18, which means they can't drive in Australia. And the only person they know who has a car and can drive them is, uh, the dance partner's, uh, older brother. So, uh, Nicole has to run across his suburb to get hold of him. Um, and together they drive to save Ebony and along the way they form a connection of their own. Now. I gather, I was reading, that uh, you hopped out of bed at like one o'clock in the morning to write this uh, or start writing this. Is that a uh, normal practice for you? Yeah, usually. <laughs> um, or I stay awake uh, past 1 a.m. Um, I kind of, um, insomnia is uh, really useful to me creatively, is what I realized. Um, I can sort of um, write any time of day when it comes to like developing things or revising them or expanding them but in terms of generating ideas sort of the best hour of the night for me is um pretty much past uh past 1 a.m actually um i think most of the uh, films i've made so far um uh, i've come up with um yeah when everyone else is asleep usually (laughs) i i often find i'm writing through the night as well to hit deadlines but that's another matter Mm, that's another great motivator yes (laughs) (laughs) so um, how much of of an age is autobiographical then oh in terms of the events uh depicted uh not at all in terms of uh, it's entirely invented but uh it's more like an emotional uh autobiography you know um i sort of uh, and how I came up with the idea, actually, I was reading a short story that was um, unrelated, but in that story, a uh, high school boy went to his first party. Um, and just kind of reading that paragraph, I just had a very intense flashback uh, to the one party I ever went to in high school. Yeah. And uh, not just that, not the events of it so much, it was um, kind of uh, who I was on the inside, basically, like, you know, just that inner feeling of kind of happy turmoil, I would call it, um, of being 17 um, and sort of what uh, I thought life would be and what I thought love would be. Um, And then uh, thinking back to it in the context of who I was, um, who I am now, uh, that I'm twice that age or more than that now. (laughs) um, When I was writing it, I think I was about twice that age. And yeah, that's kind of where where it came from. So... There's a there's a couple of lines in this I want to ask you about. Um, kind of thought, you're not going to get in trouble for this. There's one line where you say, uh, uh, Nicole Kidman is trash. And then... Oh, I'm so glad. Finally, somebody asked me that. Because, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, I think half of Letterboxd wants to behead me. And I'm just like, what is wrong with you people? Because it's two teenagers <laughs> disheveled on the side of a freeway. Who are clearly trash, trashy as hell, calling like the epitome of like critical acclaim and grace and talent. Nicole Kidman, that like obviously the line is ironic. Um, and the reason I put that in is also it's you know uh, a very recognizable name, so people would understand who she is outside of the country. It's obvious that like the butt of the joke is the person who is saying it, not Nicole Kidman. My God. But yeah, no, I really clearly need to clarify. So oh my God. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. Did not expect that to explain that. So but much. then um going on, uh you then pile in on Kate Blanchett as well. Likewise. <laughs> right, okay. Jesus. Does that need explanation? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> again look at who the speaker is yeah yeah i know lacking class or acting talent <laughs> so, 
No, I mean, uh, Cape Blanchett, like I worship at the altar of Cape Blanchett. Are you kidding me? Like, you know, Tar was my event of the year last year. Um, so, yeah, no, like, I, I assumed it was clear that the <laughs> joke was at the kids' expense. Yeah, no, <laughs> They're the two most acclaimed actresses of my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move on to another aspect of the film. And um, you've got a few love scenes uh, in this, which are always... Um, uh, kind of awkward to film, you know, in your comfortable situations to film on a, on a do on a film set. Uh, with regard to those, did you have things like um, intimacy coordinators, which seem to be the way forward to doing these scenes now, or was it done in another way? Um, no, this one uh, we spoke in advance, um, and the guys were comfortable individually with doing it without a um, uh, intimacy coordinator, or preferred to actually, um, and. To be honest, like, I don't know, I don't really feel like, uh, you know, sex scenes need to be uncomfortable. I think they're made uncomfortable. Um, I've now done, I think, uh, 14 in the last three years. It's sort of, everyone, uh, you just know that, like, it needs to be finished really uh, quickly. You're not going to do unnecessary takes. So I'm really yeah. excited to be in that position where, like, the crew knows we're not going to mess this up. Um, and everyone is sort of hyper- uh aware uh you know of protecting uh the actors um i was very lucky on of an age especially i worked with an amazing amazing crew um i mean you know it was a closed set obviously during the shooting of the love scene but um still like the preparation that goes into it and you know we had other safety measures um and you know and even like also both of the guys knew like uh everything was discussed in detail uh but we could change things at the last minute. If like, even if they change their minds about uh, what we'd agree already agreed to, they have like you know complete freedom to do that. And um, uh, no, I thought you know to to us it just felt like a you know romantic scene. Uh, it was uh, the, every, the, everyone was very connected and very able to crack jokes as well. <laughs> whenever they felt like it, which actually helps. Uh, yeah, in terms of you know the on screen bond, I think. Uh, it's about them two feeling relaxed and trusting each other and trusting me and uh, our cinematographer, obviously. And by that point, we we're very close friends, um, you know, and very much, I think, on the, looking out for each other. So, yeah, it was actually, we finished early that day. Uh, I mean, finished filming early that yeah. day. So, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. To reflect what happens on screen in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned then that you've done sort of uh, 14 short films, and I was having a look at your back catalog. Oh, no, it's 25 short films. I said <laughs> I've done 14 sex scenes in the last uh, Sorry, quite right. Years. <laughs> so where I was going with this is that your output is quite prolific. Um, in fact, it's extremely prolific. So what can we look forward to next? Because I'm suspecting it's imminent. Yeah, I know my uh, third feature is premiering at Venice in a couple in a few weeks at the Venice Film Festival as part of Horizonte. Um, so it's called Housekeeping for Beginners. I made that film in Macedonia. Um, it's also a queer story, although a very, very different one. <laughs> um, and yeah, I've got a couple of other features in uh, financing with my same or with the same producer as of an age. Um, uh, same team in, in general, actually, love an agent, you won't be alone. Um, and otherwise, uh, to be honest, I, so I, I was in a very, you know, lucky position. I made two features, uh, three features in two years. And then I'm now just taking three months to just like go to festivals and parties and, you know, holidays and things. I'm not going to be working. Yeah, you got to have a break um, sometimes. And I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> so finally then, I um, often ask directors this, uh, going right back, right, right back. Can you remember the first film that you saw in the cinema? And what was it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was called, uh, As Good As It Gets uh, with Helen Hunt and Jack Nicholson, um, 1997. I, I grew up in a town without a cinema, so the first time I could go to the cinema was um, in Australia, uh, and I moved here in 97. Um, and I know I was trying to get into Titanic, so that was going to be the first film I ever watched, but it was sold out. <laughs> and I had like a free ticket, um, and it was as good as it gets, which actually I now much prefer, and it's like, it's a film I love. Um, I haven't maybe seen it in 20 years, but it's, it's a film I hold very dear to my heart, actually, so yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much for your uh, time, Goran. Uh, and I wish you all, all the very best for the future with your future productions. If this, if of an age is anything to go by, uh, it should be some great stuff coming up from you. Thank you.
Thank you.